Hello everyone and welcome to a rainy day 8 at the Canadian Tulip Festival. And it can't be sunny all the time so I've decided today we'll do something a little bit different. I'm going to do an inside rainy day thing. We're going to look through some of the best memorabilia that I've found since um, working on the Canadian Tulip Festival since last January 2019. And we have some pretty amazing stuff that we found when we cleaned out all the offices and we cleaned out all the storage bins. We ended up finding some pretty amazing things and I thought we could take this rainy moment to share them with you. So, <clears throat> as some of you may or may not know, it is the 68th edition of the Canadian Tulip Festival this year. So the Tulip Festival began um, as an idea in 1952 with uh, Duncan McTavish. He was the chairman of the Federal District Commission, which now everybody knows as the NCC. And Mr. McTavish thought that the tulips had drawn so much attention that it would be a great idea to include a festival along with the floral display. So the Ottawa Board of Trade thought that was a brilliant idea and um, it was also an idea that was supported by a very famous photographer and someone we uh, credit as really the founder of the festival, Malik Karsh. You know his brother, Yosef Karsh, he took uh, some of those iconic photographs uh, that people remember from the war, the one from Winston Churchill sitting brooding in his office, etc. So today I'm going to show you a few pieces that we have. So from the very first edition of our Tulip Festival here in Ottawa was in 1953 and here we have an edition of Time Magazine from April 19th, 1954. And you'll see the tulips were so popular that they were mentioned in the Time Magazine piece and had a nice full color spread back when those were quite expensive to do. Here you'll see an example of the hillside rock gardens that used to be a, a little bit more um, in the style of how the garden beds were made. So this is an incredible little piece of history here. Even smells like a library if you're into that sort of thing. What we also have on the table was a few things I found from Malik himself. This is a 4 by 6 negative probably taken on his Hasselblad. So this is how negatives used to look back in the day. Super giant. And to me, as someone who studied film and photography and who studied uh, the Karsh brothers, this is a very special piece of history. And to be able to have a couple negatives of Malik's of the work he did in Commissioner's Park when he would photograph tulips. And he used to go down to the park super, super early in the morning. And I mean early, like um, four or five in the morning and wait for the sun to rise so that he could get the perfect shot. And these are some of the original negatives from Malik. Awesome. So that's another one of my favorite pieces. A Couple other fun things we found along the way and I'm gonna share that with you now. We have the 1958 press book, and let's clear out our delicate objects here. And we'll get this book into frame. Look at this. They don't make them like they used to, that's for sure. Absolutely gorgeous, giant, leather-bound book that encapsulates the 1958 Canadian Tulip Festival. And if we take a look in here, you'll see some of Malik's best work. This is one of his very, very famous photographs. And you'll see this being used even now to this day. And this print was made in Malik Karsh's uh, photo studio in downtown Ottawa. It's even assigned 
on the negative. And in here, you'll see some fantastic stuff from the 58 edition of the Canadian Tulip Festival. So the Board of Trade, um, which went through a couple name changes and then is now back to being known as the Board of Trade, is really the founding uh, group. Malik Karsh uh, had a particular love of the tulip. And you'll see some folks have really taken advantage of this book. This is how we received it, which is too bad, but I promise we'll take excellent care of it from now on. And in here, you'll see all kinds of um, fantastic press releases the way they used to be done. Some amazing photography from Malik himself. And again, don't be mad, but this is how it came. So that we've lost a little bit here, but we're gonna take good care of it from here on. We'll be sure to to archive them properly. I just want to move the book over so you can see this. That is Malik Karsh's signature in the 1958 book with what would have been one of his chosen images. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. This is the opening ceremonies from 58. And then we've got the RCMP band was in attendance. Looks like it was also a rainy day in 1958. <laughs> it ran from May 15th to 30th. So it used to run um, full 15 days. We are now 11 days. And that change was made quite a while back. Here you'll see the Prime Minister of Canada, John Diefenbaker, officially opening the Canadian Tulip Festival on May 16th, 1958. Here we have some wonderful letters. We've got... <laughs> that's wonderful. So the Governor General, this is a telegram, 16th May, tulips have arrived safely. Please inform President Ottawa Board of Trade how much the Queen appreciates the gift and expresses her sincere thanks to him. So isn't that something? And here we go, a whole bunch of other letters. We've got all the premiers that received tulips and sent their thanks. Some fantastic old typewriter letters. A lot of thanks here. So we have this 1958 book, and we have a couple others that go throughout the ages. Take a look at this. And this is what the map looked like for the tulip root. Isn't that fun? Now, we've got a lot of press clippings here, so I'm going to switch books on you going to show you a few other items before we get back to showing you more tulips. And we've got some <clears throat> different eras represented. So let's take a look here. I believe this one is from 1967? Yes. This is when Edward Macy's was the chairman of the Canadian Tulip Festival. So we've gone from the 50s to the 60s here. <clears throat> Here's your save the date card. If you were invited from the uh, Ottawa Board of Trade to come to the Tulip Festival. And here we're going to see some wonderful stuff from 67. And again, you'll see the dates back then in the earlier times were Ottawa, uh, uh, here we go, May 15 to 30. And now we're always Mother's Day weekend is our opener and we close on the Victoria Day weekend. And there's so much good stuff in here. I guess some of my favorite is the advertising, the typography, the layout of some of these older uh, articles, features and ads. Some gorgeous stuff there. 
And yes, it has gone through a lot of changes, but the Canadian Tulip Festival has also spawned a lot of the festivals that are currently in Ottawa. For example, um, <clears throat> we used to have many more concerts, and then that sort of spawned off and turned into our, our different uh, outdoor concert festivals like Blues Fest and Jazz Fest. And we used to have um, a tulip marathon. And that also spawned out into a whole separate event, which is the Ottawa Race Weekend. And that happens the weekend after the Canadian Tulip Festival. So I often think of the Tulip Festival as the grandmother of all Ottawa festivals. They kind of started here and grew uh, from there. Here's a, a song that was made directly for the festival. Uh, by Mary Jackson, 1962. And of course, again, being in the graphics world, I really do enjoy seeing all of the different representations of the logo that has happened over the years, all of the different uh, types of ads. Here's a letter from the Prime Minister, April 14th, 1966, uh, thanking our Chairman Edward Macy's for having him at the opening ceremonies. Here's a letter from Buckingham Palace. You don't see those every day. Again, writing from the Queen to express gratitude for the tulips that were sent to her. And a lot of cursive writing and handwritten notes that a lot of kids wouldn't be able to read anymore. And here we go again for the fantastic different versions of the logo. Here's what the logo was looking like in 1967. And again, there has been so many ways of celebrating the Tulip Festival. When you're looking at a festival that has a 68 year history, it's a little hard to invent something new. So if you look at some of the next decades, they're doing things that we had also planned to do this year. So let's take a jump forward. We'll go to the 90s, which I know doesn't sound like history, but if you think about it, this book is 25 years old. And here we go, you can take a look at, again, how times change, palettes change, color palettes, some of the advertising that was done there back in the mid-90s. Oh, that one doesn't belong in this year. So again, this is just everything that you would have seen uh, going on during this is 1995 this is the year we're looking at and again here you can see we've got another different Canadian Tulip Festival logo this year was called the friendship that flowered and again some really fantastic archival stuff we do a throwback Thursday that um, will feature all kinds of stories from all kinds of years. Um, so be sure to follow on Facebook for that. So again, they had had uh, parades, flotillas, uh, which I'll get in the thing there. And these are all things that have um, come and gone and come back again. We were looking at doing a two different parades this year, a military parade to kick it off and then a vintage victory parade to wrap it up. Now we ask you to join us for the vintage victory parade online instead. Check out Facebook for more info on that. There's Princess Marguerite back in 95. So I will just take you through a few more things before we're done for our rainy day. A couple things we found that I really, really enjoy, just want to share with you. One is this uh, guide to Canada's capital that was printed in 1973 with a reprint in 
75. Brutally honest about our weather, but they're right in that we're very friendly and a, a great place to visit and really like visiting all of Canada in one spot. We have so much diversity. So these are incredibly fun to read. And then we've got ourselves whole bunches of different items I could go on and on so I won't drive you nuts. There's a wonderful fluffy. I believe this tulip head was from uh, 2002, but we'd have to ask Michel Gauthier, our executive director emeritus. He would know where this fellow's from. You see he's got his little tulip, tulip guys on him. And we've got here some of the pins that have been made over the years. And we also have pins available uh, for sale at the boutique this year. So be sure to visit tulipfestival.ca. Do a little shopping on this rainy day. We have got some beautiful items and handcrafted stuff. Um, we've got all kinds of things. Handcrafted tulip candles from Doozy Candles. We've got copper work from Hazy Daisy Dragonflies. We've got... Uh, night lights that are going like mad from out of the ruins glassworks. So here you can see uh, we have a tulip legacy pin. That's from many years ago. We have uh, this one which we've made a replica of now. This was the year that uh, we celebrated the U.S. We have a bunch of those. So like I said, we could go on and on but I won't. I'll let you explore the website. And looks like the weather is going to be perfect for tomorrow. So I plan on doing a garden check-in uh, probably around noon or one. Give the garden a, a time to warm up. And uh, I'm going to leave you on that guy because I just think he's the cutest cutest thing ever. And uh, I'm certainly talking to my team about how to get plushies into the shop because they know me. I can't, I, I love a good plush. Um, so there you go. That's today's rainy day update. We're delivering tulips of thanks today to uh, the St. Pat's Testing Center, uh, to the Hôpital de Hall, and to uh, another one of our nominated heroes. We've got new tulip tunes, new music and tulips, new songs of liberation out today. So while you're stuck inside with the rain, uh, Take some time, visit the site, and enjoy. And I hope you enjoyed that tour. And we'll be back in the garden as soon as the weather allows. There we go. I'm going to get my finish button. All right. See you tomorrow.